Yeah. And it's on. Okay, good. Okay, so one of the tools we're going to talk about today uh, has to do with more the chemical side of the triangle, but also is affected by the other sides to the mental, especially the mental side. And the, uh, I'll put this back here. Yeah. And it's just something of the structural as well. And it's called chronic inflammation. By the way, you've got some fun things here, some information about me. Be sure to read that. Um, and uh, you've got some those on information. You've got some some general diet tips here. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about regarding diet. We'll probably have a special even just of that. But it gives them just some, some quick uh, tips there. General things that everybody agrees on. Some good exercise tips. And again, we can have a whole meeting just on that. But uh, just some general things to help you get going. And then we've got the information notes. We've got some different foods and things you can look at here. So, now, to some degree, inflammation has has gotten a bad a bad rap because acute inflammation is a good thing. So acute inflammation like like quick intense inflammation can be very helpful. It is essential for helping you fight infection. Mm -hmm. It's essential for helping you heal injuries. Where the problem comes in is with chronic chronic inflammation. It's also called silent inflammation. Instead of so you you get injury, you get infection, you get inflamed you solve the problem, it goes away. That's what's supposed to happen. The problem happens, the problem comes when that's chronic. It doesn't stay. It just, it just, it doesn't really just keep going on and on and on. It's also called silent inflammation. And uh, in fact, Time Magazine a few years ago had a, had, it hit the cover of Time Magazine, they call it the silent killer because inflammation, chronic inflammation, can be involved in all kinds of health problems that can give you serious effects and even death sometimes. So, some of the health problems include arthritis, autoimmune diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis. So the autoimmune problems are becoming much, much more common now. Uh, and one of the causes of those autoimmune, auto, and autoimmune problems are complicated. Uh, they're not just about inflammation, but part of the problem is inflammation. Cardiovascular disease, big, big deal with cardiovascular disease. Um, most of the real research I see that looks good uh, suggests that inflammation is a much bigger factor than something like cholesterol levels are for cardiovascular disease. And the reason for that is that cholesterol doesn't really stick to your arteries unless, because your arteries are like uh, coated with um, Teflon? Teflon, yes, that's it, Teflon. Uh, inflammation is like taking, it's like taking sandpaper to Teflon. So you got this, these nice slick arteries, nothing sticks to them. You take inflammation, it's, it, it roughs them up, and then things start sticking to them. And that's where the real problem comes in. Just by the way, I've had cholesterol over 300 for about 15 years. And, but my triglyceride HDL ratio is practically perfect, which suggests that things aren't sticking. And when I go and get a credit ultrasound done, they're like pristine. Nothing's sticking there. So just a little side note on that. So cardiovascular disease, um, myositis, either I did sign into it, it's inflammation. Uh, muscle pain, myositis. Uh, Alzheimer's disease, very, very strong correlations with inflammation and Alzheimer's disease. Parkinson's disease, uh, type 2 diabetes. Several types of cancer have strong correlations with um, inflammation. And cancer is on the rise too. I, I've heard like three or four, I think three or four people in the news recently uh, who had, had cancer. Uh, neurologic brain and nervous system disease. So yeah, uh, the inflammation really can be damaging to the brain. Uh, and unfortunately, once you get that brain reaction going, inflammation, it's sometimes hard to, to shut it down. Um, we have different ways of doing that, but that's one of the hardest places it is to work with. Uh, depression. Uh, that's partly due to the effect on the brain. Uh, asthma, asthma is a, inflammation is a big contributor to asthma. Uh, allergies, uh, allergies is kind of a kind of chicken egg kind of thing or a vicious circle because uh, inflammation causes allergies, but histamine is also pro-inflammatory. So they kind of feed off each other. You have, you have uh, 
high histamine levels, it creates more inflammation, which creates more allergies, which creates more high histamine levels. Uh, eczema and other skin problems also move into it. Now, I'm not saying that inflammation is the only thing that causes all of these things, but inflammation is a big uh, addition, adds to all these things, and it makes you more likely to develop them. Uh, inflammatory irritable bowel disease and uh, is uh, related to inflammation. Oh, that's again a, a, a chicken and egg thing because inflammation creates uh, inflammatory bowel disease, and bowel disease can create more inflammation. Uh, and one thing that happens there is because the bowels are thrown off, you're going to have decreased nutrient absorption, which kind of just makes everything worse. Uh, so, sounds bad. What, what, what causes all this? Now, here, here are some of the causes. Chronic infection can do it. You've got to, even if that doesn't have to be a big infection, but it'd be even a small infection, like a gum infection, gingivitis, uh, gut infection. As I, as I said, the, having a ear old bowel uh, can cause inflammation as well. Uh, eating trans fats. Um, they're getting away from putting trans fats in things now, but sometimes what they're doing is they're, they're just finding out different ways of, of labeling their food so you don't know there's trans fats in them. Um, you have to be careful with anything that's, that's thoroughly prepared, you know. The more, the more it differs from, the more it diverges from uh, the, way it became, the way it started in nature, the more likely there is to be things like chemicals and trans fats and things in there that aren't good for you. But in general, uh, uh, watch, watch out for trans fats. If they say uh, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils or fats, that's a trans fat. So avoid those. Uh, prostaglandin imbalances. So prostaglandins are chemicals that are produced in our body in reaction to fats. And they're, they're all, they all have their uses, but we get too much of one or more, then it's a problem. So prostaglandin imbalances can uh, result from eating too much trans fats. Uh, too much arachidonic acid for animal fat. Now, this is an interesting thing because arachidonic acid is only high in animal fat if they were fed grains, like they weren't meant to. You know, it, the, you know cows, you know, and buffalo, and things like that didn't evolve eating grains. We just fed them that because we had more grains than we could use as a way to fatten up quicker and, and increase our increase profits. But if you have, if you, so that the grain feeding. Uh, and you'll, you'll see it advertised in the, in the store, you know, uh, you know corn-fed beef, you know, not a good thing, it really isn't. Um, but if you feed the same animal grass, it changes the fat content dramatically. Instead of being high in arachidonic acid, it's high in conjugated linolenic acid, which is like, it's very similar to fish oil. It's an it's a, it's a omega-3 anti-inflammatory oil. So the same animal, feed it grains, it's inflammatory. Are possibly inflammatory. Feed it grass like it was meant to be fed, it's anti-inflammatory. Interesting, huh? Um, too much omega-6 fatty acid from vegetable oils. Now, omega-6 fatty acid is technically anti-inflammatory unless you get too much of it. If you get too much of it, the body converts it into arachidonic acid, which is the inflammatory one. It's like you're eating a bunch of corn-fed beef. Uh, so corn oil, canola oil, peanut oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, are all sources of omega-6 fatty acids. Um, and if you get too much of them, your body will start converting them into arachidonic acid and become pro-inflammatory. Extra virgin olive oil is okay. And it's, uh, it's the way it's usually used. Uh, any, any oil that you take and heat the heck out of, it's, you start creating trans fats. Uh, avocado oil is something people don't know much about, but it's also a really good, good oil that is not full of omega sixes. Uh, avocado and olive oil are full of omega nines, which don't convert to arachidonic acid. Um, so this says here, omega six is anti-inflammatory unless, like most Americans, you get too much and it converts to arachidonic acid. We we get a lot of vegetable oils in our food as, as, as you know there are salad dressings and all the different preparations and things like that. We get a lot of the oils in there. More than we need, and we get more than we need, it converts to arachidonic acid and becomes anti-inflammatory. So that's one thing. So that, uh, some things that can cause problems. Now, also nutrient deficiencies. There are certain things that are anti-inflammatory, unless we don't have enough of them. So B6 or pyrophosphate, phosphate, magnesium, zinc, and niacin are all anti-inflammatory nutrients. They help convert omega-6, uh, help prevent the conversion of omega-6 to arachidonic acid. So like I say, you get too much omega-6, uh, it can convert to arachidonic acid, which is pro-inflammatory. 
these nutrients help prevent that conversion. But again, if you're eating too much of those omega-6 acids, omega-6 fatty acids, you use up those nutrients. You end up being deficient in them. Uh, omega-3 fatty acid deficiency. So you're not getting the omega-3 fatty acids which are anti-inflammatory. So it's fish oil, uh, flaxseed oil, uh, and grass-fed meat, butter, and milk. Um, as opposed to grain-fed. So the, the grass-fed meat, milk, and butter is all anti-inflammatory. But if you eat the other stuff, it's not so good. Uh, allergies, histamine is prone. So if you have allergies, you know, you're likely to have inflammatory problems too. Because histamine is pro-inflammatory. Excess insulin production. This is a big problem in this country. This is an enormous problem in this country. Um, we have a diabetes epidemic in this country. They don't call it type 2 diabetes adult onset anymore because kids are getting it because of the awful diet we've got. Uh, the diet's high in sugar, uh, high in starches. Uh, and in addition to everything else, excess insulin and creating insulin uh, resistance, excess insulin is also pro-inflammatory. So one more reason not to like diabetes um, and not to eat lots of sugar and starches and things. Inflammatory free radicals, uh, uh, just that you, we get exposed to things in the free radicals in the environment that can create inflammation. And there's blood work that kind of suggests that. Stress, there's a mental side of things. Stress is a big factor in creating extra stress. Oops. Okay, stress is a big factor in creating extra inflammation. Okay, obesity, this, this is a, another big thing in our country, uh, especially the belly fat. It, it, it's really interesting, the fat in our belly is different than like the fat on our arms. And the fat in our belly tends to create some real nasty uh, immune reactions that will, you can have everything else working for you, and too much belly fat, you're still gonna be, be high in inflammatory chemicals because what, of what happened, there's a whole complexity, uh, I don't wanna get into right now, but because of the belly fat, uh, it, creates auto, it creates immune problems that, and the immune system creates those inflammatory uh, Inflammatory enzymes. So, uh, and we have obesity epidemic in this country. And it's, it's, this morning I heard on uh, on uh, NPR as I was waking up that uh, we got like a forty percent obesity rate in, in Davenport or the Quad Cities. So, I was pretty high on the list. We're ahead of the rest of the country. Woo. Uh, <laughs> I guess like thirty percent the rest of the country. You know? <laughs> but uh, <coughs> California, yeah, I mean that's it. Uh, overwork, overwork, including overexercise. So you think exercise is good for you? Well, you know, there's this thing this, this, this I like: it, moderation in all things. Too much exercise, too intensely, is not good for you either. It'll create inflammation. It create all other problems too. So a moderate level of exercise is really good for you. It will reduce inflammation. Too much will cause inflammation. So let's look at. So what, what can we do to get better with this? Uh, Let's look at foods that increase inflammation. No, I'm not getting better yet. It works. Okay, uh, trans fats. Uh, so trans, what, what are the sources of trans fats? Uh, things like margarine. You know, for a long time, they promoted margarine instead of butter to help your heart rate, to help your heart you know, cardiovascular disease. Well, it's just the opposite. But it's much better, better for your heart than margarine is because margarine is full of trans fats. It says, it says right, in order to make that, that um, omega-6 vegetable oil solid, they have to put partial hydrogenated fats in there. And that's a source of trans fats. So potato chips, corn chips, crackers, well, if they cook this oil at high heat, it contains trans fats. Maybe it says hydrogenated or partial hydrogenated fats or oils uh, in the ingredients is contains trans fats. And sometimes they'll even say it contains no trans fats in the potato chips. And, and, and it's, that's right, before they cooked them, there were no trans fats. They didn't add trans fats to it, so they can say no trans fats added. But they created trans fats when they, when they, when they cooked it, anyway. Uh, too much grain-fed meat, we talked about that. Um, and a lot of people eat you know, too much meat anyway. Uh, you know, three to six ounces of dense protein uh, three times a day is plenty for most people. I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, you might need more. Um, or another way of looking at it is take you know, the uh, size and, and thickness of the palm of your hand three times a day, and that's, probably, that's a good way of measuring the amount of Dense protein you should get. It, that doesn't help. Oh, I mean, it could be cheese, it could be tofu, you know. Uh, but that's a, the size of, of dense protein you want to get. Uh, you don't need to sit down and have an eight ounce steak for dinner or a 12 ounce steak for dinner. 
I can't imagine eating that. I've seen sick me sticks in the minion too. Um, maybe not for, you know, maybe two days worth. Um, the, and the, then the old, uh, you know, grains, uh, margarine salad, too much vegetable oil, margarine salad dressings. Uh, grains, now most grains are moderate in fat, but all the fat is omega-6. And so we eat a lot of grains in this country as, as part of our, our, our diet. And so we get way too much omega-6s in there. Um, also, grains, starches tend to create higher insulin levels. So there's that insulin inflammatory aspect of it as well. Uh, the meat and potato diet. Uh, meat and potato, I put bread in there too. But that diet, high in inflammatory fat, high in starches, which ups your, your, uh, in, your insulin, and also low in the vitamins and minerals that keep you from converting omega-6 to arachidonic acid. So you're, it's low in the anti-inflammatory vitamins and minerals, and it's very high in things that tend to create you know, uh, inflammation like uh, insulin and arachidonic acid. Okay, so now enough of that. Whew. Let's talk about what you can do, things that, are, that you can do to help out. Okay, so foods that cool inflammation, grass-fed as opposed to grain-fed meat, but I know. Okay, I talked about that earlier. Uh, fish oil, omega-3 fats, really good inflammatory product, but we have polluted the heck out of our oceans. So they're just full of mercury and PCBs. So you have to get a good quality fish oil that, that has a third-party company that will verify that it's been decontaminated. Otherwise, um, yes, that's what we we'll use. North Naturals. North Naturals, that's it. North Naturals, yeah. We use that here, and uh, it's, you can get it in the health food stores. That's one of the better, better companies. They've got a really, they've, they've got good detoxification. They've got third-party verification. Uh, flaxseed oil. Now, flaxseed oil is it has good anti-inflammatory properties, but uh, it it goes rancid really quickly. So don't buy a quart bottle of of uh, flaxseed oil because it's going to go rancid before you, you're you've gone through half of it. So buy a small amount, make sure it's fresh, refrigerate it, and use it quickly. And it has to be, doesn't it have to be ground in order to get the flax, <clears throat> the omega-3s out of it? Well, if it's oil, yeah. No, I mean seeds. just the seeds, the, the seeds. flax seeds. Yeah, I'm talking flaxseed oil. Now, uh, flax seeds are a little better if you want to, you know, take and grind your own. You know, uh, they, they go, rants a lot slower in seed form. Once you grind them, if you take flaxseed meal, you know, same problem with going rancid quickly. So if you're gonna grind your own, you know, just grind enough to use that day. If you're gonna buy a, a bag of flaxseed flax meal, don't get very much of it because it's gonna go rancid quickly. Can you smell it? I mean, can you tell? You can taste it. Oh, okay. You can taste it, yeah. So also, what else? Onions, garlic, yum. Uh, berries, berries, you know, especially blueberries. Blueberries, blueberries, mulberries, uh, raspberries and strawberries, especially blueberries. Blueberries are very high in antioxidants. Uh, raw pineapple is a raw pineapple is kind of iffy uh, because it's a source of bromelain, but it's also kind of high. It's also uh, high in sugars, you know. So if you have a sugar issue, you may want to you might want to go more with berries, which have a low sugar content and less less raw pineapple. Raw pineapple is great after you've been working out. You know, bun you really you know hurt tomorrow, and you have some raw pineapple that can. The bromelain will really ease up the, the sore muscles and decrease inflammation. That's why it works. Uh, most fruits and vegetables, but especially almost all fruits and vegetables, especially in their whole form as opposed to a juice form, but especially berries. Berries are, are the king there as far as fruits go. Uh, you need to be moderate with some fruits because they can be high in sugar, uh, like bananas. Bananas aren't really a fruit, actually. They're, they're an herb, and bananas have no fiber content, uh, so they tend to have a high... Uh, a high What's that? Yeah, go ahead, Dick. Thank you. Yes, big help for me. Okay. I don't want to get milk from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving it back. Sure. Yes. Okay. So, what herbs help to cool inflammation? Ginger. Ginger is one of my favorites. Talk to Karen. Um, very anti-inflammatory. <laughs> also antiviral, anti-cancer, and it's a digestive aid. Uh, if you go to my website uh, and go to the blog section, type in ginger. You'll get a few articles on that, but you'll also get a, a, a recipe for what's called ginger aid, which is something you can make at home. 
uh, and it would really give you a good source of, of, of anti-inflammatory ginger. Uh, turmeric, cumin, uh, garlic, I talked about garlic before, talking about again, I like garlic. Um, these are all nice anti-inflammatory herbs. Um, mangista, which is uh, another very similar to turmeric as far as anti-inflammatory properties go. So those things you can do, uh, things to avoid and things to not avoid, things to eat that will help decrease inflammation. Um, so test for inflammation. There are different ways to test for inflammation. Uh, lab tests include C-reactive protein, one they commonly use to, to help detect heart disease. Uh, your sed rate, sedimentation rate, uh, serum insulin is, 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 is said insulin is an inflammatory hormone, so it's, it can be inflammatory at high, high doses. So that's a good measurement. Uh, triglyceride to HDL ratio tells you a lot about whether your your um, your cholesterol is going to stick to your arteries or not. Uh, eosinophil level is related to allergies. You, you, high eosinophils uh, often indication of high allergy levels and high histamine levels. Uh, ferritin, which is a storage form of iron. Uh, iron iron is one of those interesting herbs uh, uh, minerals that I'm really careful with. Uh, prescribing to people because you need a certain amount of it, but too much of it is anti-inflammatory. And ferritin kind of measures your iron levels over the last two or three months, and so it tells you uh, it's a storage of iron, actually. Uh, so it's, it's a better way of, uh, of measuring your iron levels or iron excess rather than just, rather than just serum iron. Uh, RBW, red blood, red blood cell width. Uh, so with the blood cells, if it's too high, it is another indicator of, of um, inflammation. And then here in the office, we have ways of testing for that too. Um, we have certain test files. We have a, a C-reactive protein test file. We have prostaglandin test files. We have allergy tests that we can do. And uh, we can see how you're reacting to uh, a level of end state. So if you have weak muscles and we have you uh, we expose you to an aspirin or acetaminophen or something like that, and you go strong, that tells me that you've got some inflammation. Not that you should take aspirin necessarily, but that you have inflammation in your body that you'd like to be, to be, careful, to be less inflamed. Um, so other things you can do, eliminate inflammatory factors like trans fats, uh, get lots of vegetables, the fresher the better, and the more colorful the better. Water, water is a good anti-inflammatory too, and moderate, fat, moderate fruits, especially berries, Include garlic, onions, ginger, cumin, turmeric in your cooking. Uh, make and drink ginger aid, okay, so you can get that on my website. Um, take good quality fish oil, 3,000 to 6,000 milligrams per day. So don't just take one. Uh, most of us need a lot more anti-inflammatory work than that, so 3,000 to 6,000 a day. Get moderate exercise and adequate rest. Uh, lack of sleep is another inflammatory factor. So what can I do for you? Well, besides you give me this information, uh, we can do muscle and lab tests for inflammation. Um, we can test foods to see if you have an allergic reaction to them. We can test food for trans fats or too much animal fat. Um, do hormone testing because certain, especially cortisol and insulin can create more too much uh, inflammation. Um, also something that uh, we've been doing a lot with recently is enhancing vagus nerve function. I won an award for this technique I developed for enhancing vagus nerve function. Feel free to admire it if you like. <laughs> <laughs> but the vagus nerve is, 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 the, is one of the cranial nerves. It's, it, the, what I said, it goes all over your body, and it goes to all of your organs, and so if it's not working right, you, your organs don't work right. Uh, but in addition to that, there's all kinds of things that it does in addition to that. One of them is, if it's working properly, it will, it will reduce the amount of inflammatory enzymes produced by your immune system. It will, it will regulate that. So uh, in addition to helping all your organs work better, it's getting the vagus nerve working better, which we've been doing a lot of work with in the last year and a half, um, can help with inflammation. And cranial other, you know, improving digestion. If you're not digesting properly, uh, you're not going to get the nutrients you need to be anti-inflammatory. Also, you're likely to cause uh, gut inflammation and gut inflammation can cause more inflammation, and so getting digestion working better is very important. So I think that's all the things I was going to talk about regarding this. And uh, let's see, oh, but wait, there's more. Um, also, we can do a very emotional technique to reduce emotional stress, because stress is a big factor for inflammation. 
I can test for anaerobic and aerobic <coughs> uh, exercise balance. That's not such a big deal, but it's something that does come in handy sometimes. Also, we have a, la a really good laser program that helps to improve circulation, uh, aids in toxin removal, and the big thing that there's been lots of studies on over the, over the last, oh, 20 years, is that it shows a decrease in inflammation. Also, it stimulates cell regeneration. Those two things, are, there's tons of research on those two things. So you've got lots of ways to, to work with that here. And what I'd like to do now, how's the time? Not too bad. Okay. I'd like to do now is very quickly just a little demonstration of how we use muscle testing to, to, to determine if there's an inflammatory process going on. And um, would somebody like to volunteer? For, okay, Susie would like to volunteer. Okay. So Susie, <laughs> Susie, is it okay if we leave the, the video on? Oh, of course. Okay. It's going to be on Facebook, YouTube, and my, my website. That's okay? Of course. Okay, great. We're not in hiding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to check. Well, I'll get back with you, Susie. And there's a couple different ways we can go about this. Yeah. Okay. I'm a hot mess. Are, are, okay. <laughs> hot mess, okay. Sounds like inflammation to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, turn the hand out. Bring them this way. I'm going to push like this. You push towards your hip. Very gentle. So I'm not too strong there. One thing we find in applied kinesiology is that certain muscles will go weak when there's certain organs that are stressed. And we kind of map that over time. Whole type. So when this muscle is weak, it could be because of stress on the liver. Um, lift this leg up, turn the tail out, hold up. And this is a little bit, you know, when I, that muscle I talked about earlier that could cause back problems if you're dehydrated? That's that one. Okay. Um, Cam, would you give me a little sure. glass of water here? Okay. So we got a couple of muscles there that are weak. I'm going to pull down, you push back, hold tight. There's one that's strong, good. So now we can use that to see. What changes as I introduce things to your body? So this is a magnet. It's a, a 5,000 Gauss magnet. It takes the energy field of whatever is underneath it into the body. So let's go see what happens here. Turn the hand all the way out. Hold tight. You push toward your hip. There you go. Good. Hold tight. Hold tight. Feel the difference there? Okay. This is a bunch of NSAIDs, anti-inflammatory, like Tylenol and aspirin, that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying you should, you should eat more of these, but it tells me that you're, you know, you've got inflammation. It means you're stronger. Lift this leg up. Turn the tail out. Hold up. Not as big a deal here. A little bit stronger there, but definitely uh, the liver-related muscles make a big difference. Okay, so let's... Uh... Oh, Karen? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Want to get me some Pro Omega? I'm actually just going to grab the bottle. Got it. So now we can also look at we get the strong muscle, and we can test for C-reactive protein. <coughs> Make sure we tell them you probably have too much C-reactive protein in your system. If you had a blood test, I'd expect that to be higher than optimal. We can uh, let's see. Check prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are those things that your body converts oils into. Hold tight. A little bit weak there. Okay. Now we can try another thing. We can have you think about different types of foods and see what, if your body reacts. Hold tight. I'd like you to think about the taste of corn chips. Hold tight. Think about the taste of bacon. Hold. Good. Think about the taste of ham. So I would say probably, based on this, it looks like you're getting trans fat someplace. And so I, you should really check the foods that you're eating and make sure that they aren't sneaking trans fats in someplace. It doesn't look like you have too much retinoic acid just based on this. Mm -hmm. um, now, oh, nope. Sorry, Michelle. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you. So now we can just something else. Now this, this is the Pro Omega, the fish oil that I like from North Naturals. I'm going to push here, hold tight, and hold tight, and hold tight. Okay, this makes you strong just like the MSAs do, but it's actually it would be good for you. So that'd be something to, to definitely 
I mean, everybody needs some of this kind of stuff, but but you especially. And now let's try something else. I would like you, Susie, to take a little sip of water and hold it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. okay. Don't swallow, just keep it in your mouth. Lift your leg up, hold up. Good, okay, big difference there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go swallow. <laughs> <laughs> and swallow again. Good. And hold. Okay. So, there was, a, there, there's a funny, there, there was a, there was a neurological reaction to water in your mouth. So one thing you can do to be really easy is drink, drink, drink good quality water and lots of it. I try to get it you know, close to eight cups a day. All right, so let's give you an idea of how we can use a plant kinesiology muscle testing to find out if there's inflammation, to find out maybe what's causing it, maybe some trans fats, uh, and to look at what could be helpful for it. So I can get some water and some, and some uh, pro omegas, or some fish oil. Now, it could be that maybe this brand wouldn't work for her. We have two or three different brands of fish oil we use here, and they're all good brands, but sometimes they don't, some people they don't work for. We have to go to a different brand. The muscle testing lets us, it's not one size fits all. It lets us tell where what's going to work for you. Okay? Thank you, Susie. You're welcome. I, you love to I would be happy to help. <laughs> Drinking water will help with that. By the way, those muscles that are weak on you, they're going to be especially a problem when you're lying down or sitting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right, drink your water. There are other things to do for that, obviously, but it's something you can do very easily and cheaply. What? Oh, yeah, by the way, here you go, Susie. Why don't you just drink the rest of this? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Karen. All right. So any questions about what we just did there? Okay, we're going to take a, just a few more minutes and talk about some more ways that you folks can work with me to get better results. We have what we call the group consultation mm -hmm. notes here. So we're going to go to Roman numeral 4 and read the other ones at home. So no, Roman number four is how you actually reach out now it go. How you can help yourself heal and stay healthy. One is to follow the diet, exercise, and other advice I give you as closely as possible. Um, so the advice I give you is based on my 36 years of, not quite 36, but on, the, on the 15th it'll be 36 years uh, of experience, plus the International College of Applied Kinesiology is all about education and research. And we have meetings every year where we present new research, like the one I just did, that won award for. Uh, and, uh, and we're constantly, you know, we're, we're just a bunch of nerds, really, uh, always studying things, always researching things. We love, this is, it's like fun for us. And so we're always learning more things. And so what we're, the, the, the advice I give you is based